Hello, my name is Mooncat and welcome to a guest video by UberNerd on how to improve your city layout. UberNerd is a longtime player that has made a bunch of helpful guides on the US forum and recently he has also started making videos here on YouTube like the one you're just about to watch. So if you want to see more of this content, make sure to check out his channel linked in the description. He just reached 1000 subscribers, but I think you'll agree he deserves a lot more. So without further ado, take it away UberNerd. Thanks for having me on, Mooing Cat. As he said, my name is Uber, and I'm glad to be here. But enough intro stuff. Let's jump right in. I have a bit of a problem, and today, we're going to fix it. I haven't updated my city layout since around the time of last year's fellowship event. That means that I've got tons of event buildings and goodies that I want to place down. And along the way, I'm going to show you all the tricks that I personally use to improve my city that you can use in your own cities. Of course, we're going to need a place to start, and the best way I've found to start working on your layout is to prepare by cleaning out all of your junk. For example, I've got all of these blacksmiths from rushing event quests and a ton of extra roads. Why the extra roads? Well, let's just say I've been working on a project with them. The good news is that I no longer need them anymore, so I can just delete them and upgrade all of my roads to the virtual future. Some things to look for in this stage are just deleting anything like old buildings from the tech tree or anything that you placed down temporarily for an event, as well as getting rid of everything in your city that you don't want there anymore. The reason is that we'll be jumping into reconstruction mode soon, and it's easier to work with a layout when you have only the buildings that you want because otherwise you have to go back and delete stuff and it's just a bit of a pain. For example, while I think it looks nice, I'm going to be removing my little park setup here that I added just for some extra greenery. This is also where you're going to want to place down any expansions that you haven't yet so that we can make full use of all the space available to us. If you have a newer city, you might not be ready to remove all the tech tree buildings from your city and replace them with event buildings, and that's fine. Instead, try to remove any buildings from ages below your current one, such as houses, production buildings, or military barracks, and replace them with those of your current age. This will cost you a small amount of coins and supplies, but trust me, it's well worth it. The only buildings that you might want from a previous age are going to be goods buildings, but even then you should try to build goods buildings of your current age and then trade with other players to get previous age goods. Before we go into reconstruction mode, there's just one more thing that we have to do, and that's to go through your inventory. Either by writing it down or typing it into a spreadsheet, I like to make a list of all the buildings that I have that I either want to place or could be useful as a filler for empty space. All you need is the building's name, its size, and maybe some of its stats if you want. I'm also including the number of them that I have in my inventory. Doing this now means that you won't have to flip between reconstruction mode and your inventory, and instead can just leave space for the buildings that you're going to place. As I mentioned earlier, I haven't redone my layout for quite a long time, so I've got a lot of buildings in my list that I want to place down. Now we're finally ready to jump into reconstruction mode. Once here, step one is to clear your entire city. Just take everything and store it. If you want to work on just one section of your city instead of redoing the whole layout like I am, then only store what you need to. Doing this leaves us with a big empty space. I found that the best way to start here is by working along the edges and then filling up the inside, or working from one side of your city to another. Today, I'm going to be working from the edges in. So, what should we place down first? My answer is to start with the town hall. All your roads have to touch your town hall, so it makes sense to try and find a good spot for it right away, and then build the rest of your layout around it. So where should the town hall go? There's actually quite a few theories that have been floated in the game's history. Everything from putting it in the corner, to a specific corner of your city, to even the center of your city. The correct answer actually has nothing to do with the town hall, and everything to do with your roads. You can put the town hall anywhere that one of your roads touches it. This means that you want to place your town hall in a spot that's convenient to connect roads to. Seems obvious, right? But this means that before we can get to the town hall's best placement, we have to talk about strategies for placing roads. And I know, I know, we'll get building soon. But this is important stuff. To have the best road layout, we want fewer intersections and corners. So in order to maximize the straight roads we have, there's really only one strategy that's best and that is to make a comb shape. 
we want one long straight road coming away from the town hall, and then a bunch of other roads breaking off from the main one. We can space these however we want to get buildings of similar sizes to fit together. This also has the added benefit of lining up all of your buildings, which just looks better and is much more organized. What about two-lane roads though? These monstrosities only show up in the progressive era and beyond, but are required for many of your favorite tech tree buildings, from goods buildings to military barracks. But going back to one of my first tips, you probably don't need those tech tree buildings anyways. For example, you can get goods, coins, and supplies from event buildings, and military units from an Alcatraz, though you will need to place at least one barracks for that. The good news, you don't have to connect that barracks to a road, and the Traz will still produce the units that you want. With that in mind, let's go back to the town hall. Where's the best place to put it? My answer is the corner of your city. I've always been partial to having it at the very top of my city, with the main road running down and to the left, but you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to. One nifty trick that you can do with the town hall if it's in the corner like this is to get some of your biggest buildings attached to it with only a single road. To do this, you need three buildings, each one a little bigger than the next, so for example, a 3x3, 4x4, and 5x5 building. Then, by placing them next to each other like this, you can leave one square to place a road, put down your town hall, and voila, all three are connected. Of course, this is best used on your biggest buildings, so I like to do this with my great buildings, and this is how it looks for me. Here, I used my Truce Tower, Himeji Castle, and Arctic Orangery. It probably would have been smarter to use a building like my Ark or Space Carrier instead, as that would have left more space for a road running to the right side of my city, but that's not what I decided to do. Once I have my town hall placed, I generally like to work around my city in a spiral, filling in everything along the edges and then working my way in. You can fill it from top to bottom, left to right, whatever works for you, but considering how many chain sets there are in the game, I find it helpful to try and fit all of those really big sets in first before trying to fit in the rest of the smaller buildings. To go back to the road discussion, it's also handy to get your chain sets down first because you don't need, nor want, roads running along the sides of your sets. Since the chain pieces for sets are decorations, they don't need roads. And since they don't need roads, chains are often best placed on the outer edges of your city. With that in mind, you may notice that I have this little alcove in my city right here due to my expansion placement. I'll eventually fill in the rest of these expansions, but until then, I think that this small nook will hold my hippodrome perfectly. With that in mind, why not fill the rest of the area with other forge bowl or soccer event buildings so that it looks nice. I also ended up throwing my Cape Canaveral in here since I thought it looked cool. You might notice that I'm also leaving an empty space here, and that's because it's for a royal marble gateway that's currently sitting in my inventory. I'm just marking off on my spreadsheet here that I'll need to place it and leaving the space for it so that I don't have to delete anything after exiting reconstruction mode. Similarly, I'm also leaving a lot of space for future Fiore villages and mountain reserves that I'll be placing, and also get into the next chain building, the Statue of Honor. Around this point, I also decided to put my harvest farm set into my city, and of course, the best way to plan it out is by using Mooing Cat's set builder. And no, he didn't tell me to say it, I just think it's a really good tool. It lets you plan out how you want to design your set and really came in handy here. After I got the Harvest Farm set in place, I decided that I could fit a second Statue of Honor chain next to the first. But once again, I don't have all the roads to victory that I would need to complete it here in reconstruction mode. Enter one of my favorite techniques, leapfrogging. Instead of placing down the set as you would in your normal city, I like to space the pieces out every other spot, which makes it a lot easier to count the number of pieces that you need from your inventory but also makes it so that you won't accidentally place a building where you meant your chain to go. Once I had the number of pieces though, I did end up condensing it all into the one chain for simplicity. I also decided to leave space here for the Tower of Conjunction. I've noticed a lot of players forgetting that it actually does not need a road, so consider using this technique with your own towers. I then did a lot of fiddling around with planning what to put next to my Statues of Honor, and decided the best route is yet another set that doesn't need a road, which is my Cherry Garden set. It still remains one of the best looking sets in the game, and I'll always have it in my city. I'm also using the set planner again here. 
The reason I'm putting down the cherry set next to the Statues of Honor is that by grouping all of these chains and sets together that don't need roads, I can block off an entire chunk of my city that will not need road connections running to it, saving me space for more buildings that will need roads. Remember, every single road tile that you place reduces the amount of space that you can fill with buildings that actually produce something useful. I capped off the cherry set here with my Celtic farmstead, and this is where I actually start laying down more roads. I decided to fill this bit of the city with winter's plazas, and then cap off the end of the road with my Alcatraz. Again, we want the bigger buildings on the outside of the city, reducing the number of roads that we need to place along their sides. I also add some stages of ages here, and I like how they all look grouped together, and it also kind of fits in the theme with the forge bowl-ish stuff above them. And the stages of ages help transition us into the next section of my city, and the next section of this video. How's that for a segue? While I may be adding a lot of druid and naturey things here that look good together, if I do say so myself, and I do, the most important thing is that I am placing them so that their short sides touch the road. This is one of the most important tips that I can give. Place your buildings so that the shortest side touches the road whenever possible. There's two main types of buildings in the game. Square ones with the same length on either side, and rectangular ones with one shorter and one longer side. The square ones can be placed wherever you want, but try to group together rectangular ones of similar sizes, such as a bunch of 5x4 buildings, to make your roads a little bit more efficient. Back to my city, I decided to place down my sleigh builders and winter train, and started filling in all of my great buildings. However, I completely forgot about two of my bigger chain sets being the Pirate's Hideout and Terracotta Vineyard. So removing a lot of what I had, I filled my sets in from the right side of the city, once again keeping all of those chain decorations as far away from me as possible, and leaving myself a little area of my city to finish filling in. This part did get a little bit messy as I had to place down all the remaining stuff from reconstruction mode that I didn't end up putting in my full layout that will end up having to be stored or deleted. And this is the layout. However, as you can probably tell, it's still not done. Now we have to go through and store all the buildings and replace them with the new stuff from my inventory. This has to be the single most satisfying step as everything comes together. After a fair amount of off-camera and small changes to my city, this is the final result. I've added two great buildings, the Stargazer and Seed Vault, which are ones I've wanted to add for a while but just haven't had the space for. With this layout, I've managed to add about an extra 200% of each attack and defense boosts for attacking armies, as well as a 124% attack and 92% defense boost for defending armies. I call that a win. You might notice though that I haven't even followed my own tips that I shared in this video. What about the whole comb idea? Honestly, it comes down to some bad planning on my part, but this is the best layout that I've found so far. Additionally, since I have a lot of different buildings instead of many of the same size, it makes it a little bit trickier to get a good comb setup. On my diamond farm though, where I've got lots of wishing wells, it makes it easy to manage roads that way. Additionally, something you should do while planning your city is deciding generally what you want to focus on. Do you want to focus purely on attack boosts? Then maybe you'll want to place down a lot of winter's plazas or the harvest farm set. Do you want to focus on goods? Then maybe some sleigh builders or stages of ages would be a good idea. What I decided to do and what I've done since the beginning of the game is take a bit more of a balanced approach and have a decent amount of attack boosts but also have a strong goods production for negotiations. Especially with the fifth level of the guild expeditions, this lets me complete them weekly without much of a hit to my inventory at all, as I produce about just enough to offset the losses. The only reason that these lines are dipping below is because I've been trading some of my current and previous age goods to my guildmates. It's also important to remember that you have to look at your city every single day that you play, and that it's the best place to personalize the game to your liking. So while my cherry set might not always be the most efficient set to put down, I like it, and I enjoy how it looks. That's also why I've leaned away from a more conventional attack layout with tons of winner's plazas, as I like having variety in my city and being able to have little mementos of my time playing the game. For example, this truce tower that I have down? It was actually the first great building that I ever managed to level to level 10 way back when I started. Of course, at that point in time, it was the dynamic tower and had a really cool animation. 
Regardless, my point is to not be afraid to sacrifice a tiny bit of efficiency for a little bit of personality. One of the best tips that I can give for working on your city though is to ask for help or opinions from other players. Send your guildmates a message asking them to take a look, or post on the forums, a discord server, anything so that you can get a new set of eyes taking a look. Sometimes it's easy to get set on building your city one way that you might be missing a more obvious set layout or a better road setup. Along the same lines, don't be afraid to start your layout over. While making this video, I tried three completely different layouts, but ultimately the one that I showed came out the best. There's also plenty of resources that you can use to help plan your city or learn more. Check out Moving Cat's sortable building table, for example, to see how different buildings stack up in terms of efficiency, in case you're trying to decide between two buildings on what to place down. Or maybe check out King J Mobile's city planning and management guide on the US forums, which goes a lot more in depth on planning your roads and maximizing their efficiency than I did here. One of the most popular tools would have to be FOE Helper, which is a browser extension that can give you some better perspectives on your city. Literally. It also gives you a nifty road efficiency rating, which is basically how well you've managed to reduce the roads needed. This isn't a bad metric for comparing layouts. However, I think this is where I'm going to have to leave it. Once again, thank you so, so much to Mooing Cat for having me on. It's been an absolute pleasure. If you have any tips for building a better city, please drop a comment down below. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope this video helps your next city layout. Thanks for watching.